Good day, everyone. My name is Theodore. I will be today's forum moderator. I would like to introduce our panelists for today. On my right is Christopher, Brian, and Ming Lun. In today's forum, we will be discussing the plans regarding banning the sales of new diesel and petrol cars by 2040. There has been a lot of talk whether the government should apply this plan. To start the forum off, to start the forum off, I would like to ask the panelists. What are the difference of these diesel engine and petrol engines? Answer your question. The difference between diesel and petrol engine is that diesel engine normally operate at a higher compression ratio than petrol engine. For example, diesel engine operate with a compression ratio of 14 to 1 to 25 to 1, while petrol engine operates at a compression ratio of 8 to 1 to 12 to 1. And diesel head with a higher compression ratio means that it is more efficient and more powerful than petrol engine. I have more clarification on why diesel fuel is more powerful and more efficient. Yes, you can. Um, the diesel engine have a more low end torque than similar size gasoline engines. Uh, higher low end torque means that the engine produces more torque per breath of a car, hence an increased acceleration from stationary condition. As for efficiency, diesel fuel contains roughly 10 to 15 percent more energy than gasoline. Is that it? I would like to add. This engine does not require a spark plug to, to ignite the fuel mixture as well while the petrol engine requires it. This is because the request to ignite the fuel is generated due to the compression of air. Also, diesel has low volatilities, which means the properties of changing greatly from a solid or liquid to a vapor, thus, it cannot form the air desired fuel mixtures to be ignited by spark plug. Besides that, diesel engines tend to be more expensive than petrol engines. A diesel engine because the fuel is self lubricating and the compression pressure inside is a lot higher. It can last very long that you are less likely to buy a new car in 5 to 7 years. The automotive companies preload all of the profit they would have lost onto the initial chase price. Thank you, Bingung. As you mentioned just now, diesel fuel is much, power, much more powerful and efficient. Then what is the main reason behind the banning of the fuel-powered cars? Uh, this is because petrol-powered cars release a lot of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide gas, which are greenhouse gases. This will cause global warming. Whereas diesel-powered cars release a lot of oxides of nitrogen, which is harmful to our health and can cause acid rain. Can I have a more in-depth on why nitrogen oxide is harmful to our health? Oxides of nitrogen inflames the lining of lungs and it reduces the immunity to lung infection. This can cause problems like coughing and uh, Theodore, I would like to add another point in regards to your, question, your previous question regarding the banning of fuel power cars. Um, I think banning of the fuel car uh, is because of the introduction of electric cars. Big companies like Tesla are making electric cars in enormous amount. It is just a matter of time before electric cars replace fuel cars. Uh, however, electric car is very expensive. Normal people can own an electric car. Hence, the plant, the plant which is turning the diesel and petrol car is still a long way to go. The battery, the battery of electric car is very expensive. For as well, for a battery replacement for a Tesla Model S is cost ten thousand US dollars. Touch it is very pricey compared to the replacements of normal car batteries. Also, the recharge points, is which is electric fuel stations, are still in development stage. So, not every place will have the electric fuel station. Well, what's, the, what's the reason for the battery to cost so much? To answer that, I will briefly talk about the car batteries of traditional ones and electric ones. In electric cars, lithium ion batteries are primarily used instead of traditional lead acid batteries. One of the reasons lithium ion cells are so expensive is that the main material needed is lithium, which is limited as supply is very thin. Not to mention, lithium mining is a hazardous job, making it highly pay fast. Okay, that's a really good point. Eh? Um, now, people nowadays think that banning new diesel will help solve the problem, but some don't believe in that. So, why is, why is the ban not the real solution to all the problems? Yeah, it's because there still many, there still remain many other urban sources of pollution, not only from transport, but also heatings, construction, domestic resources, and external sources of pollution that drift into cities from outside. Most of the belief is from agriculture sectors. There are also some other urban sources of pollution 
arguments on and upper trends, especially from wood burning stoves. Banning of diesel and petrol cars is not the real solution because some of the citizens which are not well to do are not capable of buying electric cars. This will not solve the problem but creates more problems. Additionally, the ban is very difficult to implement. This is because after the ban is imposed, fuel power vehicles are basically rendered useless. Not only the problem of vehicles occupying unnecessary space arises, there will be protests from citizens as their once beloved cars are now heaps of junk that need to be disposed of. Um, after talking about whether banning diesel will help solve the problem, what are the alternative types of transportation to substitute diesel and petrol cars? Uh, in my opinion, using bicycle is a more realistic yet cost-effective substitute for diesel and petrol cars. There are already countries that are implementing this, such as China and Japan. They have public bicycles in most urban areas ready for public use. The government should provide more public transport systems such as MRT, which is accessible to most of the locations around the city. It is affordable and convenient for the citizens. Most importantly, it reduces the pollution in the environment. I agree with the main points. As the public transport is one the most basic facilities of a modernized cities. Also, I believe that hydrogen cars and electric cars will be the future trends. Hydrogen car, which is a vehicle that uses hydrogen as is on board fuels for multiple powers. The power plants of such vehicles convert the chemical energies to mechanical energy either burning hydrogen in the internal combustion engines or commonly by reacting hydrogen with oxygen in the fuel cells to run electro, electro, electric motors. Hydrogen is a renewable gas, thus is considered an environment friendly. That's a really good point coming from Brian. So there's a lot of good on banning petrol and diesel engine, but what is the issue that may arise after after this ban? I believe that the usage of electric cars will be increased and cause the battery disposal issues in the future. It will affect the environment in some for example some batteries contain lead, which is very dangerous. Uh, yeah. Lead can be absorbed into the body through inhalations and ingestions both of which are equally dangerous. If we did not carefully recycle these disposal batteries, some people may expose to the leads and notably the children. High level of leads exposures can affect the child's growth, cause the brain damage, harm kidneys, and induce behavioral problems. On the other hand, an electric car is silenced on the road. This can lead to accidents as people will not know which direction the car is coming from. Lastly, short drying range is another problem for electric cars. You have to recharge the car after driving just about 50 to 100 miles. It's very inconvenient if you travel in long distance and it takes a very long time to recharge. Not to mention, many second and third world countries depend on the free power vehicle to do and carry on with their daily activities in life. As Bill has mentioned, more problems such as an increase in unemployment rate and poverty occurs. Furthermore, most lorry drivers and truck drivers drive diesel engine car vehicles. With this vehicle ban, the country will surely face a bigger problem, which is a decline in its economy. Thank you, Christopher. That's all for today's forum. I'd like to thank all panelists for attending today's forum. We were able to get a deeper in depth on why it's possible to get uh, renewable and, and, uh, energy engines. Thank you.